Okay, we're starting. Hello. So this is my tabloid comic. This is the... Uh, now, this looks a little bit squat, but it's eventually it's going to be 11 by 17, or 11 by 14, rather, which is pretty big. Um, so you're probably familiar with an 11 by 17 sheet. Let's see if I'll have one nearby. Looking around. Um, yeah. I don't see one handy, but um, 11 by 14 is almost as big, pretty big. And the idea is that this will be like a big tabloid. It'll fold um, horizontally. He uh, like it'll fold like a book, but also it'll be fold over like a newspaper. Um, and it's just going to have these sort of one page comics or half page comics. In this case, this is a uh, Okeanos Ocean Titan is on the front page. And we're going to do some inking. <laughs> Which in my case is both inking and drawing. Do a little bit of both. I want to do... Uh, let's see, I think I've got a number... two or a number four brush. Round number two. I'm going to start with our, our close character. might be the wrong brush we'll see yeah this is probably not gonna be the best one for whatever reason let's try another one let's try the watery number four smooth that's too watery how about distressed small that's gigantic. Whenever I'm looking at these brushes, classic brush liner rough. That's closer to what I kind of want. To learn to throw a line when you're when you're inking. Our character Okeanos has these uh, kind of wrist guard looking things. And let me take the pencils back out. So this is what it looks like without the pencils. And I want to sort of emphasize the undersea realm of what's going on. In this case, he's just off camera by a little bit. Watching the uh, Secret Empire submarine head towards this open base. Now, I did use a scene like this previously in um, um, Le Corbeau. I think it was the third or the fourth Le Corbeau. I had a thing where there was some... there was a secret submarine base. It's just too good of a setup. This character is meant to be an homage of a uh, Golden Age Submariner, Prince Namor. Which is, he's a public domain character at this point, which you may not realize. But um, when Bill Everett initially set up the comic studio um, that he was part of, which had Carl Burgos and all these other guys, they put out like a little self-published comic book and it was called Movie Funnies. I think it was Movie Funnies number one or something like that. It wasn't Marvel. It was not Timely yet. Um, Timely didn't even buy it. Martin Goodman had no idea. They put it out and uh, self-published it and it failed, but it had Namor, the Submariner, so it was self-published. And because of the rules of the time, and it appeared without a copyright, so Namor the Submariner 
is actually public domain. Now he is trademarked, he's not copyright, but he is trademarked, so it's not like I can go too far. I could potentially just do a name or the Submariner cartoon, but anything that, that came after that initial very first appearance would run the possibility of being a copyright violation. Or a trademark violation, rather, not a copyright violation at all. I gotta make these two ships match somehow. But because there's no copyright, if somebody said, oh, that character seems a little too similar to Namor, well, that doesn't matter. That's not one they can win. Um, copyright and trademark are two different things. Okay. Now, here's how I want to do this. Um, I got to do some stuff in the foreground, like this character is supposed to be hiding in front of some seaweed. But um, let me take the pencils out for a second. The way I wanted to show bubbles and movement is, and you can see I did it over here, was we have this sort of cloud of bubbles that follows behind the figure in movement. And we did it to a smaller degree here, back here. So I think we've got to do it with this submarine as well. If you've ever watched the old um, Jerry Anderson Stingray, it's a puppet adventure show <laughs> with a lot of submarines and stuff in it. Hang on. And the scenery and lighting and everything in it was really great. So I was kind of influenced by that as well as looking at a lot of the stuff that they did for that show. Your bubbles don't always have to be circular. They can be like almost like two bubbles got crunched together so you can have sort of a different shape. And this is meant to be like a cliff wall. Sea cliff. We could even put some fishes in here to emphasize the underwater nature of it. even use um you know maybe the submarine has a headlight or something that's kind of illuminating the way and then open the foreground our main character is hiding behind the seed weed. And he's making the decision to follow the enemy submarine here, which he describes as a submarine bomber. A deep sea bomber. In the world of the Murr, that's who we're calling our underwater people. They don't just have submarines, they have, it's like airplanes, they've got bombers, destroyers, fighters. It's like a reconnaissance submarine, you know, they could have all kinds of different submarines, so it's 
whole different ways to do it. One was done really well, but let's see. Take a look. All right, I'm gonna pull the pencils off. Come on now. Pull the pencils off and see how it looks. Actually, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. Our main character, he doesn't have a lot of details on him. I mean, he's basically this shirtless mer merfolk guy. And, uh... We want to really emphasize the environment, the nature, the the vehicles. Know, the underwater like even just this like little line right here that kind of gives us the idea that we're underwater we're also going to do the bubbles the speech bubbles these imperials are up to no good so the bad guys are some part of something called the Secret Empire. Secret Empire itself was a Golden Age comic. Um, and it's kind of a Flash Gordon kind of um, thing. But like to understand you know, World War II era Namor, the key part is that it takes place during World War II, so he's constantly having to do these battles against, you know, the the Germans. And I don't think we can get away with that <laughs> in this comic. So, instead, we will fight the Secret Empire. Which were really just stand-ins for the uh, Germans, anyways. Even when they were when they were a comic. We could even put like a little overhang here. Maybe. Oops. I'm gonna do a really thin line. even do like a sound effect. It's an underwater sound effect, so what would it sound like? I'm going to put it on its own layer. We could put it on the ink layer, but in case we do it wrong, it'd be harder to get rid of. So we're going to do R, 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 rumble. Messed up the U.
Humble. Oh, what happened there? Okay. Try again. Good enough. Now, of course, we're, we're going to do this in color, too, so this is going to be colored over at some point. Okay, our final... Our final panel is just going to show Ocean Titan Okeanos swimming up, like, because and it's going to investigate. So I just drew this sort of swimming pose. And you'll notice I, I don't go very far in my my art a lot of times. I don't um, I don't do like what you might call finished pencils. May swim forward. Let's see. This brush improved greatly when I lowered the size of it. Almost makes me want to retry the, um, the round number two that I rejected because it was a little bit too unwieldy. These are the forearm guards. So in my cosmology, Okeanos is an ocean titan, one of the many titans, so Prometheus is the titan of knowledge. He's like a nephew, this guy. And then Stardust, another golden age character is also a titan, a brother to, um, or half-brother to Okeanos. I am not liking what I did here. This is supposed to be like a pinky, so it's not as long.
unless this thigh is extended. Whoops. And these panels, even though they look small right here, you know, when you when we expand this thing to the full 11 by 14, this will end up being pretty big. In fact, I'm not even drawing it at twice up sizes because it's that's too big. Put a little bit of a shadow under the chin here. Okay, same deal. With the bubbles. And in fact, I kind of want to go... This is the rhythm here. We've got a mostly open. And then we got this big chunky black area right here on the next panel. Big chunky black area, it's the next tear down. Mostly open. I'm thinking of doing the water in black here. So we'd fill in all the water except for him and, and this uh, trail of bubbles here behind him. I think I might have to do, to do that. But my problem, my problem with that is, well, it has a lot to do with these seaweeds. I'd have to figure out a way to get the seaweeds. Um, <laughs> you know what we could do? One way we could do it. First of all, I'll give it its own layer just for a second. This is be the last thing on here anyway. Other than the color, color's gonna take another at least two layers, um, probably four. Let's see. Drawing guide. Edit the drawing guide. Delete. Delete. I'm centering the drawing guide on him, but actually, I'm, I'm gonna put it along the length of his head and then down here and we're going to put assisted drawing this is on the new layer okay good let's use this uh classic brush liner oh i don't like that there's some transparency built into that natural brush We're just going to do sort of a, a, a nimbus of light around him. And I'm not 100% sure that this will work. It's just an idea. okay though like a lot of this is okay now once we have that going we're gonna turn the assist off and the drawing guide and we're gonna start filling in with our simulated brush, all the black areas. I'm going to go ahead and cover the seaweed and we'll just redraw the seaweed in white as if we had white ink. To fill it in, and I think that might be really cool. 
but what you're trying to maintain here is like a sense of rhythm between the um, between from panel to panel, and um, you know you want to get a light panel then a dark panel, a light panel then a dark panel. You know, show where you're going with it. Um, show some drama. Save the drama for your mama. All right. And I can tell I've got some blending to do here on this black area. <laughs> some of that can be taken care of in color, but you know. No substitute for black ink. Don't worry too much about the um, speech bubble. We'll call out the speech bubbles on a different layer and it'll, it'll come right back. All right. I just noticed my panel borders. There's a panel border that doesn't belong there, right here. And then here's where we overran the panel border. That's a problem too. All of this looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna switch to white. First of all, turn it off for a second. That's I just want to remind myself where the um, seaweed was. We could even make some jellyfish or some fish swimming around him, or some bubbles. Pencils off. I think it doesn't work that well. <laughs> Let's go for rusty number one. Rusty number one has never let us down. This point I've brought back the speech bubbles except for this one I've got to do which is the our ending bubble here make sure we're on the right one there we are and this point I'm just whiting it out And that's, that's up our next comic, right there. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, but yes.
You could use this kind of white on black effect to do special abilities like daredevils, you know, blind sense, or some kind of magical thing. It's a good idea to have a couple of like plans in place for all of the different things you got to show. All right. This panel's looking fine to me. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of shading on the figure. for this page. Okay. Please like, follow, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh, Billy.